Comics.com. Today's interview with Healthy Gurus, I have Mike Safai, the inventor of the Grapple Grip, and he's also a fitness competitor. So Mike, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what you do. Thanks for having me. Um, yes, my name is Mike Safai. I'm uh, now 33 years old as of June 12th, and I've been involved in fitness my whole life. Uh, for the most part, um, I started out doing push-ups, pull-up bars, and such. My father had me running, and um, naturally we loved Rocky and Rambo, so coming from a big family, nice. yeah, we all were That's just nice. on the playground, just doing crazy things. Um, well, life happens eventually, and I came, uh, moved to Southern California, and uh, I just took it upon myself to become not a bodybuilder, but somebody that has a muscular physique. Um, sure. It's something I always looked, looked like forward to being when I was older. Thundercat, He-Man, and all that, they're all muscular, <laughs> but agile right, at right. the same time. So, you know, I um, did the whole thing. Uh, as I got older, I ventured into surfing. I've been surfing since I was 14, and um, cool. I just kept it athletic. Uh, fast forward, I was a personal trainer. Uh, I began at 19 years old, and I was always the weird, quote, out-of-the-box trainer. And um, eventually it led me into jiu-jitsu, and jiu-jitsu was just a game changer. I trained at the Gracie Academy in Torrance, California, and it has been the best thing in my life, and I owe so much to that and the Gracies themselves. And uh, eventually it led me to developing the grapple grip which enhances your grip strength for the grappler. Um, that was the primary reason, but going to conventions and such, we uh, learned that it's applicable to so many different sports and, um, and just other hobbies such as fishing. Sorry if fishing's considered a sport, but sure. yeah, yeah, why not, right? Yeah, absolutely. But fishermen were talking about it, um, people that shoot guns and such. So my whole life, has always been derived around fitness, and um, this is just one way for me to give back to the community, the fitness community, and hopefully help other people. Okay. Um, you know, you kind of covered a lot right there, um, so let's kind of break that apart a little bit. When you talk about jujitsu, jujitsu is a very big influence in your life, and it kind of made you the person who you are today. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about that? First and foremost, I'm not a jujitsu competitor. Jujitsu is just something I do and love. I have done a couple competitions, and there's two different aspects of the sport. I've been training now over six and a half years. So the first thing when you mention a sport such as jiu-jitsu, they think of MMA and punching and all that. It's not like that. Um, it's actually a, a beautiful, intelligent sport. No disrespect to any other sport, not putting it down. But it's, it's submission wrestling. It's the game of chess with your body. You know, Joe Rogan just got his black belt, and he said it himself. He said it's the closest thing to reality that you face, and you can't deny what's happening. You're defending yourself in the most critical situations, and I couldn't agree with him more. And what? yeah, so it humbles you. It humbles you when a 130 pound person uses technique and defeats such a powerful person. Um, and so it makes you a more efficient thinking person in general. Getting out of the chair and getting in the chair, even if it's not the most efficient, your goal is to be more efficient. And as long as you have a goal, you have a goal and you know, you're working towards something better. So I'm not the best in the world. However, I am decent at, you know, at least compared to what's around me and such. So I owe that all to my academy and to my determination. So yeah, be the camaraderie, the, um, the knowledge that they teach, how you don't have to go fight nobody or whatever. Actually, jujitsu is meant to not hurt the person. It's more to subdue and control. Right. And so that type of uh, mentality, you know, for six years has changed me entirely. You know, so. Yeah, I mean, you brought up some really good points, too. I think a lot of the times when people uh, think about martial arts and maybe somebody who studies a martial art, right away they think, like, oh, you know, hey, can you beat me up? It's always like that challenging question in the back of their mind. Anybody who studied any kind of an art form would know that it's really a lot more um, mind before body and the mind-body connection. So really preparing yourself, uh, making the man in your head bigger and stronger before the body is. And like you said, a lot of it's kind of just equaling things out. You're really not trying to overpower somebody, but more or less just uh, kind of leverage what you have, protect yourself, defend yourself, and kind of go from there. Absolutely. So it's a, yeah, definitely a good outlook. And it's definitely done something for your, uh, your personality, your drive, and your willpower. 
yeah, as well as my business of personal training, because the movements are so natural that you can't help but to think this would be good for my client. You know, their their body movements that could be that can anyone can benefit from. Um, to tell you the truth, the true story is um, I've always been lean. I've always um, been blessed to have a six pack, and I know as you get older, you get you know the age weight, and so I was like, wait, what can I do? So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go join jiu-jitsu. Because they're always on their back and they're moving left and right angles. And that'll help me maintain my six-pack. And so that was one of the reasons why I actually went yeah. there. <laughs> and you'll see. Idea. Yeah. <laughs> some of the most amazing people are. I mean, in the fitness community, I just want to warn you. We should be happy that the top jiu-jitsu athletes in the world don't compete. Because they look absolutely amazing. And every day. This is not just, I diet for three months. Every day. And that's because of the rigorous training that they put themselves through. Truly is a lifestyle. Absolutely. Okay. So jiu-jitsu transitions into your personal training and personal training. Obviously, you got better. And yeah, you do look like you're in great shape. Thank Why don't you talk you. a little bit about your um, the fitness competitions? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I uh, have recently started a, um, a hobby, a fun hobby, um, and that's competing in NPC events um, to, as a men's physique competitor. I um, have learned a lot, and I love competing. Um, sometimes it doesn't always go your way, but that's just the way it works. That's also a humbling aspect of the game. But it gives you one more reason to train. You know, when you're in this forever, it gets boring. You sure. know, I, I, I mean, we can all have these famous sayings or whatever, but it, it gets boring, you know, like anything in life. So this just gives you one more drive, and, it, you know, you might take a different approach to training that you never did. Uh, for example, I never worked out my shoulders until I started training, you know, um, and such. So I was so happy that John Lindsay, you know, because we're on the West Coast, uh, started this because, you know, I'm not a big guy, nor do I ever want to be, and I'm not that skinny, like, ripped guy. I'm, like, right in the middle. So this gave me the opportunity to, like I said, not only train for something and encourage me to go and drive more, but... To also show it. I mean, it, it feels good. There's a reason why there's mirrors all around the uh, the wall in the gym. You yeah. know, and that's to look at yourself a little bit. So, you know, it's a very fun thing, and I do love it. It's a clean, healthy sport, and um, all the men physiques uh, competitors, including yourself, we are all pioneers. And um, you know, one day we're gonna look in a book, just like we do with Arnold and all the guys. And I'm not yeah. comparing myself, and we're gonna be one of those guys. You know, and so. So okay. yeah, it's really cool to definitely be at the, uh, the beginning of something. Um, I myself started competing last March, and uh, my next competition is going to be in October. Um, when's your next competition? Uh, July 29th, 28th. July 28th. I'm doing the USA's. I will be attempting to earn my pro card. Um, it's going to be tough. It's everyone in the U.S. Um, that's competing. So, you know, I just have no expectations. I'm just going to go in there and have a blast with uh, my loved ones and just make the best of the whole trip and, you know, learn. No matter what happens, it's going to be a learning experience. And that's what I'm looking forward to doing. Yeah, good point. I mean, a lot of people, when they uh, talk about competing and stuff, you know, you always do, you train, you cut, you diet. You do all these things, you sacrifice for what, maybe 10, 30 seconds on stage, <laughs> if that. So you have months of preparation, it's a lot of hard work, anybody who's gone through it knows that, um, but in the end, whether you place or not, it's really more about making improvements for yourself. Absolutely. So you're competing with yourself, where you began and where you are now. Um, so yeah, that's great, good luck with that. Thank you. <clears throat> so let's move on to the grapple grip. Um, are you the sole inventor of the grapple grip, or is there anybody else that does it with you? Well, um, I am the sole inventor because I took the initiative, but um, in all fairness, we, I train on the bars, a lot of monkey bars, a lot of pull-up bars, um, rope climbing uh, stuff. And um, you can see some of the stuff on YouTube when you insert the name. And basically, when you train jiu-jitsu, you typically train with a gi. A gi is the white uniform that you would see in a, in like a karate class, if you don't know. And so, you know, a lot of sleeve grabbing, collar grabbing, submission grabbing, that's jiu-jitsu. The art of grappling is where there's no clothing to grab. You might see them wearing shorts and uh, a rash guard, but you're not allowed to grab it. So basically, you're grabbing limbs. Now, the leverage from your fingers to grabbing cloth to a wrist is entirely a different game. And you can see that. Um, MMA, same thing. Um, so, 
one day we're doing gi pull-ups to strengthen our grip. And I'm thinking, you know, what about no gi? So I went to a hardware store and out of galvanized pipe and duct tape, I um, invented my, at the time, grapple grips. And I took them to the gym and it was amazing how we got such a loud reaction from it um, and how many people couldn't do it. You know, that, that was the coolest part. They couldn't do it. Right, you know it's challenging. You know it's going to be tough. Yes. Okay. And, you know, um, this one bodybuilder, um, you know, uh, she comes. It was a she, but, she, you know. Uh, They're tough, man. <laughs> it was a he and a she, so let's just put it that way. And she's wearing her wrist wraps, and she couldn't even hang. Um, to show you the way it works, uh, these hooks, they clip onto basically any bar. Barbell, dumbbell. Pull up bar, both open and closed. And if you don't wish to hang or to use that, you can just attach this to cables. But we are doing pull ups. So naturally it hangs like this. So once you grab this right here, right, mm -hmm. it's not like grabbing a rope where you can dig into it or grabbing a gi or a towel. Okay, so it's a different world. You can't even, if you don't have the ability to support your weight, you won't even be able to hang. And that was the issue with the bodybuilder because of. The wrist wraps. So it's interesting. Now um, I kind of heard some things in the past uh, to talk about grip strength. Um, kind of like you know you have your core. Your core is going to be the center of your body. So if you have a strong core, obviously you can kind of go out and train and get stronger, more strength from there. Um, people will talk about if you train your legs. Um, if you, you know you see some guys with the bigger upper bodies and smaller legs, they really don't train their legs, but they would be so much stronger um, if they did train their legs because the legs kind of holds the body up. So kind of taking that idea, is it something similar when you have you know, good grip strength? Is that supposed to kind of like you know, travel throughout and give you more upper body strength? I mean, how is it going to help you, I guess, uh, you know, just doing your regular workouts if you use the grapple grip? What kind of expectations, things can you look for, improvements-wise, in the gym? Okay, it's a great question. Thank you. Um, basically, I always say you can have the best tires, the best rims, the best brakes, but if you don't have the bolts to hold it, forget about it. Everything pretty much besides your brain begins from here. Let's just take a simple exercise such as leg lifts, leg raises on the pull-up bar. You know, uh, everyone wants to work their stomach out, women especially, okay? And um, sometimes people are limited in exercises because of secondary muscle groups, such as leg raises. So you look at somebody that cannot do a pull-up or that can't hang. It's not because their biceps can't contract, it's because their grip slips. Now, the part with the grapple grip is that you have a vertical angle grip. This is not offered in a gym. Right. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe, because we did a patent search when we got this patented, I couldn't believe it wasn't patented, because it's cool. so simple. So, the vertical angle grip is not a hook, okay, and you guys can try this in the gym. You know, typically when you do a lap pull down and you start getting fatigued, you'll notice your hand opens. Yeah, it starts to slip. And you end up here. It's a very safe and strong position. Right. However, you can't do that when you're holding a tennis racket. You can't do that when you're holding a baseball bat. And there's a difference between having a strong grip and having a strong functional grip. You see, functional grip is key. Typically, when you see grip strengthening devices, you see grasping devices. So you stand there and you move and you try to do what you think that you need to do and it's hopefully going to help you. This right here, for example, if I were to grab your wrist, I'm not just squeezing it right. and I'm not just going to hold it. I'm going to pull you in. So what does that mean here? That means I'm grabbing your wrist, activating my biceps, activating my lats, maybe my hips. So how do I simulate that? Well, you apply the grab grip to a cable pulley system and you do the same thing and such. And that's the difference between Functional grip strength, meaning the muscles you activate in your sport, or as close as you can get to, to your sport, with the uh, grip angle, and that was our whole goal with this. And I can tell you from personal experience and other uh, uh, people that have tried it, it absolutely works. Yeah. You know, I think you uh, brought up a great point and a great word. Um, before you even said it, the word functional came to mind, and that's really the best way, I think, to utilize the, uh, the grapple grip. Um, you know, my background, I've been a fireman uh, for several years, and I can tell you, you know, when I went through the training academy, um, when you're taking around a uh, two and a half inch uh, line, and you're trying to fight a fire, and trying to move this line that's fully charged with water, 
you know, I kind of laughed at the guys. Like, oh, man, it's heavy. I'm like, yeah, right. Well, when you actually pick it up and try to move it, it's like, oh, my God, is this heavy? <laughs> yes. The next day, the first day after we're putting out a couple of uh, practice fires, you know, I woke up, and I'm trying to feel my forearms. I'm like, oh, my God, what did I do? Um, you know, so I think that's a great idea. I mean, it's good for sports. It's good for, you know, that line of work. I mean, functionality across the board, I think you got to cover. Absolutely. That's pretty interesting. Um, I think later on we are going to take it into the gym. We're going to do a couple of uh, exercises just to demonstrate how it can be used. Um, but anybody who's on the edge, you know, thinking about the grapple grip and whether or not they can apply it to, you know, their sport, their profession, or whatever, what would you say to somebody? Um, basically, what I would do is uh, try to pick the size. There's four different sizes. It ranges from a one inch diameter. That's around, that's the distance around to a two and a half inch diameter, funny that you mentioned that. And what you want to do is you don't want to go for the gold um, automatically and just go for the biggest size, even if you think you have a strong grip. This will humble you very fast. And the reason why is because it's a lot harder than you think once you have to rely on the finger to palm pressure when you activate your muscle. So you, what you do is you try to be as realistic as possible to your sport. Me, I, I don't use a two and a half inch. I use the two inch grip, which I earned. I spent time with the one and a half inch diameter for about a year and a half. And the reason why is because most ankles, and biceps and all that, I mean the biceps are gonna, always gonna be a little bit bigger, but right. you know, anything more to me is just out of my range. However, there's a lot of people um, that love the two and a half inch. People with bigger hands, you know, people that are power lifters, arm so wrestlers. Right, right. And such, yes, absolutely. We have a lot of professional fighters that use this, and some of them are bigger, and they prefer that. So, you know, it, it, you have to be, the point of functionality training is to be as realistic and to get as close as you can to simulate the sport that you're trying to get better at. Okay, so if you're holding a baseball bat, the two and a half inch will be beneficial, but I think the one and a half inch might be a little bit closer to the bat. Now, I'm not a baseball player, so if you're a baseball player and I said something wrong, correct me. Go ahead, get the two and a half inch, you know? So, yeah, that's my goal. That's my approach towards it, and that would be the best advice I can give to anybody. Cool. Um, you talked about, you said a couple of professional athletes are using it. Correct. Are you able to mention any names? Yes, actually, I am. Sylvester so Stallone. He's not a professional athlete, but he would... Really, Everybody knows Slack. Yeah, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> um... He was actually, um, it, it was in Muscle and Fitness Magazine. It was featured as part of his arm workout cool. um, with his trainer, Gunnar Peterson, as a person that advocates for the grapple grip. You have the Hedon Gracie uh, from the Gracie family, Hallett Gracie from the Gracie family, Henner Gracie, so all of the Gracies also enjoy it. Let's see, uh, we have Kenny Johnson, which is an Olympic hopeful. He uh, is the wrestling coach for uh, Anderson Silva, Minotaur Nogueira, um, and a couple more other people. And um, we've seen uh, videos of Carlos Condit, uh, a UFC fighter, using it. We've seen videos of, uh, I believe, Brian Stan. He, it was part of the Gaspari uh, strength conditioning video. And this is all without me asking anyone to do anything. Um, I just randomly do searches sometimes, and uh, what I do is they pop up, and, and you know, I'm very happy to see something that I created as oh, you know, yeah. useful. It, it hangs in Greg Jackson's gym. It's used, if you guys look, it's used in the Ultimate Fighter, the Ultimate Fighter show. There actually was a quick clip of somebody using it um, a couple seasons ago. So it's had its a little, you know, sure. uh, its view in the spotlight and um, it's something that people do know about. Um, however, we would like to keep spreading the word and have everyone try it. Cool. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to try it, and uh, we're going to get a chance to go ahead and show that soon, so uh, you guys can all see what it's about. Um, but I'll tell you what, in the meantime, great interview. Um, I really look forward to trying it out. I think you got a pretty cool product, and I uh, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Cool. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you, guys. GrappleGrip.com is where you can find the Grapple Grip. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Mike Safai. My name will be there, and uh, if you ever have any questions, just hit me up, and I'll help you. Fitness tips, Grapple Grip tips or whatever you want to talk about. Nutrition tips? Absolutely. There you go. Competition. It'll help. Check it out, guys. You're going to love it. Thank you.